And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Our roads, our highways, our schools, our hospitals, our airports. I go throughout the world. I mean, you go to Qatar. You go to, to, some people say Qatar, but you go to Qatar, you go to any of, the, so many places. You go to different places in China, different places in gutter. Asia, different places in the Middle East. Let me hear the music You look better. at some of the airports they have. I got to hear drop the kick Murphy right now. To some people, when they hear Trump speak, they get high. They feel oxytocin and endorphins spreading through their body. To others... The opposite. Pain, fear, anxiety, hatred. And so the main question is, why do you fear or hate Trump? In plain English. I don't understand it myself. Well, I do, actually. They've had it so good for so long. They have so trampled the American flag. They've raped the Statue of Liberty. They have erased our borders, bastardized our language, erased our culture, so they're afraid somebody might bring some of it back. How hard is it to figure out why the left is out of control but now we understand the left but we don't understand the hatred and fear that's coming from the purists there are idiots in the media who would rather see hillary win than trump win i'm telling you the way it is these are the people who would rather fall on their sword to show how pure they are they would rather fall on their swords like save your confederate money the south will rise again the cruzites the cruise bots so I'm asking you, the audience of the Savage Nation, why do you fear or hate Trump? To me, it's the essence of what's going on in the American world today. Uh, there's a guy at Fox News who wrote an article, Why Can't the Media Stop Trump? They're being told that it's the media who created him, the media should stop him. And we've read it all. Casino bankruptcies, the allegations, the foreign workers to staff his properties and make his merchandise how he gave money to Democrats, including Hillary, how he changed from liberal positions on abortion and health care. I've heard all of it, but nothing stops him. I've seen all the accusations of him being a racist, and yet I've not heard one racist statement from Donald Trump. I've heard him being called a sexist, yet I've not heard one sexist statement come from his mouth. I've heard the words misogynist, never heard a misogynistic statement. I've heard the word xenophobic. It is opposite. He's not xenophobic. What, when you defend your own nation, you're xenophobic? That's a trick of the left, is to control the language. As far as encouraging violence, what do you want him to do? Be run over by a college student who wants to punch him in the mouth? No. He keeps winning primaries. No matter what the media tries to do to him, he wins primaries. No matter what the Mexican president, if you want to call him an ex-president, says, or the Chinese, or the Japanese, no matter what they say, the Teflon Don keeps going. Why do you fear him or hate him? In essence, I'm asking progressives who listen to the show because they love me, because they got oxytocin and, and endorphins out of me. I don't know how that works, but I'm positive that when progressives listen to Michael Savage, they feel safe and calm again. It's like being back home. Then they could say, I don't really, I don't, I listen to him and I don't like him. But they feel that they're talk, they have their uncle talking again, the one who knew what was going on, the smart uncle, Uncle Mike. All the progressives who came out west, and they shaved off the hair and put in a, shaved the head off, and put a ring in their ear, a ring in their nose, and they thought they're wild and free, and I hear their chains dragging, and I hear their, their rings dingling. They're not free, they're slaves. So when they hear a guy like me, the progressive, they say, oh, I hate him, but I listen to him. Why do you listen to him? Because they know that I'm right. And they get oxytocin and endorphins released in their brain, and their moods go up, and their immune system gets stronger. What is it that they fear and hate? Now, I'm getting calls telling me why people fear and hate Trump, but I want people to call to tell me why they fear or hate Trump. See, that's what I want. So we have some quotes, for example. Here's an assistant professor at Dartmouth. You know what that's worth. If you went around to a gas station in the area of Dartmouth College in New Hampshire and you uh, pulled someone out of a gas station with grease in their ears... They could give a better statement than this, but as an assistant professor at Dartmouth today says Trump's rise represents a failure in American parties, media and civic institutions. Shockingly, few public figures and elites are defending the norms of public debate. 
and restraint from violence that Trump is bulldozing. What? Excuse me? What violence? See, these are the same people who've said nothing about Obama, nothing about Obama's violence being conducted in a stealthy manner. Now already they're worried. And here's a guy from the Atlantic magazine who I never heard of, is appalled by the Trump candidacy. And he says his media profession is no longer a trusted arbiter of the truth. And uh, they don't. he doesn't know why they're not attacking him. He has Cokehead Roberts. The one-time ABC so-called reporter and Sunday host, coked up Roberts, writes with her husband, Steve, can Donald Trump be stopped short of the Republican nomination? Probably not, but the rational wing of the party has to try quickly and forcefully to make that happen. That's from coked Ted Roberts. So NPR freaks out over that because she's supposed to be a, a journalist. But she says, I'm not bound by the rules of journalism because I'm a commentator. Anyway, so it's on and on. Then overseas accusations again. Not only can, why can't the media stop him? And around the world we see a headline. Around the world. Doubts about Trump. And then they go to a guy at the University of Leeds in England. University of Leeds. Uh, Leeds no longer leads. It follows. University of Leeds, they run in fear now of the Burka people. But anyway, the ex-University of Leeds has a guy there. Christine Harlan, who's an expert, don't you know, on U.S. politics. Don't you know how, they, how do they come up with these positions? You talk about a welfare state. <laughs> There's no greater many welfare states in the world than universities. They're all welfare states. Unless you're in, in, in a hard science or medicine, the universities are nothing but a welfare state for people who can't get jobs in the real world. Who ever heard of a thing like this? Last night I was watching a show. I got so bored I watched a, a NASA show about <clears throat> geniuses, brilliant people at NASA building rockets to Mars. And I said, oh, my God, these are the people I wish to God I knew. Brilliant minds able to perceive and conceptualize and build vehicles that can go to Mars. Engineering geniuses. Instead, I have to listen to Black Lives Matter like they should dictate... Dictate the the, uh, the dialogue in America. Could you imagine? And you know, I sit and watch this and I see communist China all over again. When you see a rabble like Black Lives Matter being given any play whatsoever, uneducated, anti-American from top to bottom, and they're being given airtime. Not the guys who developed the rockets that can go to Mars. You hear this? And I see communist China in the making in this country, where the rabble, where the rabble took over China and destroyed everything that was worthy of China's great culture. That's what's going on in this country. Make no mistake about it. I'm a student of history. I see what's going on. So sometimes after retreats, I watch a NASA channel. I felt as though I was back in some rational world. Intelligent men and women, mainly white men, by the way. Uh, sorry to break your heart. You can't fake rocket science. I mean, you just can't fake it. It's not like community organizing. Uh, brilliant men, I mean, talking, ordinary guys. If you saw them in the street, you wouldn't see anything different about them. Ordinary guys. They're planning on a rocket to Mars, and they're talking about how much energy the thing has. It's awesome to see that it's still going on. It's one of the things I'd recommend to Donald Trump is that if he becomes president, the first thing he does in science is rebuild NASA and give us back our premier space agency. There's so many reasons for it. I don't want to go into the, to this right now. But Obama, one of Obama's first evil acts was destroying NASA and turning this country into a passenger on a Russian rocket to the space station. He made a second class in, in the space, world of space. That's the first thing he did was destroy us in space. And he got away with it. Why? For the very same vermin in the media who are attacking Trump in plain English. So again, I ask you, what do you fear or hate about Trump? Not, Don't tell me what they fear about Trump, because I know what they fear. I want to know what you fear. I want the progressives who listen to me for the oxy, oxytocin. That's what I want. That's really what I want. Around the world, doubts whether Trump could make America great again. Christian Science Monitor. There's about as much Christian in the Science Monitor as there are teeth in my dog's mouth after the dental surgery. Where the Christian go in the science monitor, I want to know. It used to be Christian science monitor. Now it's just the uh, anti-American monitor. It's like the monitor in the Merrimack. 
We couldn't even build a monitor in Merrimack, I don't think, anymore. So, here's a guy, uh, Christine Harlan, who teaches U.S. politics and international political economy at the University of Leeds. I love it. International political economy. If you ask this idiot to run, let's say, uh, an average immigrant in New York City gets off the boat, the good ones, and puts a cart in the street to sell frankfurters, that person knows more about the U.S. economy than this professor does, I can guarantee you. That I can guarantee you. And, uh, and the average Muslim in the street selling, uh, selling frankfurters in New York knows more about the U.S. economy. Anyway, this person says it's quite clear that people are not happy with the establishment. And they're so unhappy they're willing to overlook some pretty serious xenophobia. Maybe it could be a wake-up call that something has to change. Wow, that's brilliant. Wow, man, that, she should be a cabinet member in, uh, in uh, Rubio's uh, administration once he moves to uh, Guantanamo. So while Trump's plans to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexican border and make Mexico pay for it or temporarily bar Muslims from visiting the United States, uh, his appeal gets wider and wider. There's a reason for it. His vulgar speech. Oh, his vulgar speech. Obama's silk smooth. There's no vulgarity in Obama. He's the cleverest liar in American political history. He has snuck his left-wing agenda right through our political system without a ripple because he doesn't do anything that ruffles the feathers he's a genius at what he does and yet here's someone Zhu Feng an analyst of South China Sea issues at China's Nanjing University says he is a real American I do not see Trump as below the standards of American politics he is a new face and a new force and he carries a lot of the real hopes of American people wow that's pretty good so there are other comments which I'll read to you, but I want to know what you, 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 no one but you, 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 the listener to the Savage Nation. What do you fear or hate about Donald Trump? And when we come back, since this is radio and it's all about sound, I will play you a montage of Trump's most frightening comments all in one. Oh, it's going to chill the, the enemies. Of America, they're going to be chilled. They better get on their galoshes. They better get. They better empty the house of all pillows and pillowcases. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call eight hundred B U I C O. I'm an honorary Irishman today on the Savage Nation. I probably have more English listeners, uh, English origin than Irish, but it's not for ratings. I do what's right. So we're talking about why do you fear or hate Trump? I don't even know what the Irish think of him, actually. I don't mean the individual, I don't mean the individual Irish guy in New York. The Irish, like the Irish. The rich Irish. The Irish. Irish, like Larry David. He's Irish. Larry David's Irish. Made a billion dollars from from a television show, <laughs> and he hates Trump. Why do all of the New York liberals, like the Woody Allen crowd, why do they hate Trump? What are they afraid of? What is it they fear? What's wrong with these people? Same reason they hate me. It's why I identify with Trump, because he's actually saying nothing different than I said for 22 years, when you think about it. 22 years I've suffered for the very same reasons that, but they ignored me. They First they were afraid of me, then they ignored me. They treated me like the Stalinists always do. But I survived anyway. So now he's going through the early phase of what I went through in radio, which is hatred like you've never seen. You'll see them jumping aboard ship once he's the inevitable winner. You'll wait and see the very same people who are spitting at him. They'll look for a job. Me, I don't need a job. They do. That's all. And I'm not going to wind up consulting for China, by the way. I'm not Madeleine Albright. I won't, rec I won't become a consultant to China on how to, how to, how to approach Donald Trump. Now, I won't recommend that they, I go to work for Mitsubishi either. Trust me on that one. KSFO, Katie, why do you fear Trump? I on line nine, KSFO. Yeah, hi. I, I Trump because when I hear him talk, I think some of his ideas are okay, but then he sounds manic, and I don't hear him really expressing a fundamental understanding of the government, like the branches. And I would like to hear him say more that sounds like he's not like a businessman on a manic binge. Um, you, know, no, I, wait, you, you keep saying the word manic. That seems to be your operational 
word. What do you mean by manic? Manic, like, he sounds like he's had, like, five energy drinks all the time, and he doesn't give any backing to what he's saying he wants to do. Like, how is he going to... No, I've had him on the show. I've asked him fundamentally important questions, and he's answered them. I could re replay the interviews, which I'm not going to do. Everyone says he has no fundamental understanding. I asked him five specific questions. Uh, for one, about the military, he answered it directly. People hear what they want to hear, whether it's me or him or other, other people. I found this a long time ago. He does answer questions. Now, you we mean minutiae of details? He doesn't have that. He's not supposed to have it. He's running for office. If you want Minutia, you'll have to wait until he's in office and he'll get a policy guy to explain it. So you'd rather see Hillary in office than Trump? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm a Bernie Sanders fan, but it's, I, I, I actually... <laughs> wait a minute. You tell me that the guy who spits up spittle while speaking, Bernie Sanders, who looks like he's on... What's that white stuff that they take? That metal? The guy looks like a nut. How could you... Okay, whatever. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Stuff. We're talking about Trump because the big question is why do you fear or hate him? So I had a young lady who's a progressive who said it's because he's not specific. He is quite specific. When pressed on an issue, he will answer the question in my, in my experience. But I'd like to hear from others before we exhaust this topic and before we go into taking your calls on this, which I'm going to take. Because this is a caller base show, and the show is booming. I had a week January in New York and Washington, D.C. Because of the snowstorms, I was preempted a lot. And pe but I did. I was wondering what was going on. And then the February came in, and the numbers are, are through the roof. I can't give them to you, but on WABC, for example, in New York, I have to say that's my flagship station. I mean, you live and die... You know, to live and die in New York, it's not like all my other affiliates don't matter. They do. But given that it's the premier station of the list, a lot depends on it. So I'm on, and in the 12-plus ratings, my show is number one on that station. I want to thank all my loyal listeners in New York uh, for that. It's nice to see that I'm back in the saddle again. But having said that, and I'm telling it to you because no one will tell it to you but me about me. It's like Donald gets up, you know, he taught me it's okay to be successful again. For years, I was like hiding my success. It beca I became embarrassed to admit that I was successful after all this hard work. He made it okay to be successful. You don't have to hide it. You know, it's like if you, if you got it flaunted, why not? He's got a plane with Trump on it. Good for him. He didn't take it from you. This is what, you see, there's a lot of resentment and jealousy. But on the same hand, it's one of the reasons the poor people like him. Because they also want to be rich. It's the old statement. Why does a beat up poor person go into a church filled with gold and beautiful stained glass and great arches and great architecture and great ceilings? Why don't they reject that? Why don't they want to go into a storefront beaten up, you know, church? Why would they rather go into some great cathedral? Because they go in the cathedral and they feel rich. They're sharing in the richness of that, that edifice. It's the same with Trump. He's rich. So a lot of poor people like him. I don't think you understand this. This is the problem with the idiots in the media who are disconnected from reality. All the people who think they're smarter than I am. People you never heard of who, if they write a book, no one buys it. No one reads it. No one buys it. They have no insights because they're disconnected from the man in the street, the woman in the street. I'm not. Although I'm somewhat reclusive, I, I really have my ear to the ground and I have a great stethoscope. My steth stethoscope tells me that Trump's popularity bridges the races, the genders, uh, for those reasons. And I told you this months ago, the reason, this was before Nevada. I told you he would do well with Hispanics. And I told you why. And I told you something that the folks in the media who think they're experts don't understand, which is reality. I know reality. They don't. I told you Hispanic men are macho. And they don't want to take... They don't want a woman to tell them what to do. They like strong alpha males. It's the same reason white women are flocking to Donald Trump. They feel protected by him and hopeful again that they can have their country back. They don't want to wind up hiding from the invaders. They don't want to hide from the invaders anymore. They don't want to see what happened in Germany over, over the uh, New Year's Eve or what's going on in Sweden where the police are telling Swedish girls to stay in at night because the Muslims and the Africans are raping them with impunity. 
They don't want that to happen in America. I'm being as clear as I can and as blunt as I can. And I don't understand why even a progressive woman who usually stays out late till 3, 4 in the morning coming from a club, if you want to deal in stereotypes, why wouldn't a progressive woman want someone strong running America? What is it? You want to be threatened in your own country? How stupid can they be? I ask myself. So without further ado, I put together, Jim did, Jim Verde, uh, one of the team members, the, the A team, the Savage team, put together a little montage of Trump's loudest moments just to make your day. Let's hear them. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're sending people that have lots of problems. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I don't <laughs> think you can say that we don't get it automatically. I think it would be, I think you'd have riots. Free trade can be wonderful if you have smart people. But we have people that are stupid. We have losers. We have losers. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. <laughs> so I'm looking at little Marco, and I say, man, there's something happening with him. We have lion Ted Cruz. I have to be honest. These people that I'm dealing with are the worst people. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on? I'm going to open up our libel laws so when they write purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. He's walking out like big high fives, smiling, laughing, like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, now you understand the dividing line. There are some of us who actually love that stuff, and, and many of you are, are shocked by it. You're appalled. Whereas Obama gets away with virtual murder, uh, he does it in such a way, such a sneaky way that you don't see it. He does it quietly. Uh, countries die, generals get fired, the military is decapitated and cut to the bone. Supreme Court justices uh, have suspicious endings at hotels in Texas. And nothing, not a word, not a ripple. Instead, you're worried about Donald Trump's rhetoric. So again, I say to you, ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Nation, what is it you fear or hate so much? I want to get it all out there. There's some news out there, by the way, some good news. Here's a nice one for you. A Tennessee lawmaker says ISIS should be allowed to recruit at colleges. I almost fell out of my chair. He's a Republican, no less. A real genius. Tennessee lawmaker says ISIS should be allowed to recruit at colleges. And we have the sound on that a little later. KSFO, Mike, what do you fear or hate about Trump? Well, I don't hate anything about Trump. Let me be clear on that. I fear, I fear that he is not going to do what he says he's going to do. For example, building a wall. I also fear that he's a, he's a progressive. And when I watch the debates with him, I, I just don't get the substance from him. And I was very turned off with the dignity that um, he may or may not have when you hold out such, such a sacred office of the land being president dignity what kind of dignity obama's dignity his dignified behavior you mean that obama represents uh, no i i can't stand obama let me make i'm glad you up. said that because uh, having the characters obama's had in the white house they'll have to fumigate it after he leaves i i agree i, with I mean you. after al sharpton enters a space you need to take it down to the studs right i agree a hundred percent with what you just said my my concern for the dictator. All right, no, I hear you. I just wanted to do a test, the probe. I wanted to do an electronic probe of where you're coming from. So you really don't like the man. No, I, I, I would say I would say you're more of a Cruz supporter, right? Yes, yes. I'm not knocking that. I don't know how many ways to make my position more clear. I like Cruz's articulations, his policies, his intelligence. He cannot beat Hillary. Now, people will argue with me, but I have a very good ear for these things and an eye. He can't beat her. Trump might beat her. That's the only reason that I support Trump over Cruz. By the way, their policies are not so different, incidentally. I, I, do you see a big difference between uh, what Cruz is saying and what Trump is saying, incidentally? Um, I, see the present I see more substance from Cruz in the debate. 100% I, I right. You're 100% right. He knows the issues better. Yes. 
But he's not as electable as Trump. He doesn't have the charisma to use a, a sort of antiquated phrase. That That's my feeling about it. But So you don't hate him. You just fear he's a phony in plain English. I, I don't think he's a phony. I don't think he's a phony. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't think that he is going to keep his word. That is my concern. I think he's a, I think he will, I think he says a lot. Well, it'd be interesting if I'm still in the radio business and I'm still writing books come next year and he's president and he backtracks, boy, oh boy, will I have a time on my hands. I will buy. I will buy more of your books. I've already got trickle. I've already got a few of them. <laughs> do, do you do you have government zero? Because we're going to send you a free copy. I don't. You can give it to you. Can give it to your progressive sister. <laughs> Why would you assume a sister is progressive? You know, I want to ask a question of gay people listening. Oh yeah, a big audience of gays, transgenders, l lesbians. I have a huge LGBT population of listeners. I know I do. Probably the biggest in the business for a number of reasons. If you're an LGBT, -er, why do you fear or hate Trump? Or do you like him? Caitlin uh, likes him. She's being ostracized. Well, sorry. Yeah, she's being ostracized by a fellow. No, I can't say that. Fellow transgenders. That's not correct. Let's see. I, I don't know the right language, but Caitlin Jenner is being ostracized by others in the LGBT community for being a Republican and for supporting Ted Cruz, for example. Can you imagine this? Of all people on earth who would who should like Trump, it would be LGB people, LGBT people who would be protected from a Muslim invasion. What's wrong with you people that you can't see this? This is what I don't understand. But, you know, there's a lot of irrationality going on in the world right now. 855 it is uh St. Patty's Day on the Savage Nation. And what that means, I don't have no idea. When it drove the snakes out of Ireland, they all wound up here. And many of them are being used in this campaign. Many of the snakes driven out of Ireland have been used in this campaign by uh, various various and sundry uh, individuals running. We had a lot of snakes being waved around with the Bibles. Boy, I really didn't like that part of the campaign so far. I was turned off by it. I don't like religion mixed into politics at all. It chills me to the bone. brings back... Uh, ancestral fears of the Inquisition. <laughs> I don't want to see a Grand Inquisitor in the White House, if you don't mind. I'd rather not see someone sitting up there uh, judging everything that I do. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want religion and politics mixed in like that. I didn't say I didn't say throw religion out of the government. Don't get me wrong. I just said separation of church and state, please. The Pope's already crossed the line to such an extent that we don't need it here in the Amer in the American political world. Okay, so Roger is calling from WFTL, great station. They hosted me when I was down there two times when the Comcast failed me in my home studio. Loved going up to West Palm Beach. Loved the sausage and pepper hero I got in the neighborhood. First one I've had in years. The arteries uh, probably took a month off my life from that one lunch that I, that I had there. Again, uh, by the way, talking about health, you know, I drift around a little because it's like a bartender. I'm not like a rigid, you know, one dimension. Again, I asked for an anti-cholesterol medication. Oh, off the charts, upside down negative for years. 20 years now, all, all wrong. HDL wrong, LDL wrong, all wrong. So I figured I should have been dead a long time ago. But no, but there's one saving grace. I told you about it. It's a genetic component that you can't modify with any drugs. I told you about it. Lipoprotein A, LPA, it's either genetically on your, in your favor or not. Luckily, I must have gotten it from my mother. It's like a scavenger lipid. Lipid. I got a good scavenger lipid out there. So I said, okay, I'm going to try a low dose of one of the uh, newer generations. Again, I took one pill. My legs didn't work for a week. I am so sensitive to drugs. I just put the whole tube away. Just sitting up there for a friend of mine who takes this stuff with impunity. My friend, Dr. S, gets a free vial of medication from me the next, next, next time I see him. But that sausage and pepper, that must have knocked out a month of my life. It was so good, it was almost worth it. What's the difference if you're old and you're going to live a month less? What are you going to do in that last month when you think about it? Let's say you're 95 and you have a month to go. And because you ate that sausage and pepper sandwich when you were 16 or whatever. And you have one month less in your life. What, matter? what does it matter? What are you going to do in that month? I often think about that. You know, I love people who make statements such as, you only live once, you may as well do that. What does that mean? I don't even understand some of these statements. You only live once. What, if you live twice, you wouldn't do it? 
but because you you live once, you are going to die. <laughs> Some of these statements don't make sense. And then the bucket list thing, that's a whole thing that came out with that show, with that movie with, with Jack Nicholson. I changed the word bucket list to something else. I cracked up several family members on this trip. But because this is a family uh, show, I cannot repeat what I called it. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. Oh. On the waterfront, Marlon Brando, Hell's Kitchen, turned into a yuppie haven. You can't even rent a, a one-bedroom on the Upper West Side now in that area of Hell's Kitchen, Lower West Side. One bedroom costs you more than the average person makes in India in 17 years in the village. World order at risk. Dems are saying Trump is a dangerous and unprecedented threat. All on the Drudge Report. Obama's involved in the campaign. Now, why would Obama be campaigning against Trump? A, he knows he could win. And B, he's afraid he's going to go to jail if Trump becomes president. Because only he knows what he's done to this country. He knows better than we know what he's done to damage us perennially. He may wind up in, in uh, on the docket. That's why Obama's campaigning like this. Everyone's afraid of him. I don't understand it, frankly. Well, I do understand it, but I, I don't fear it. I don't feel like what's he going to do to me. What's he going to end free speech in America? Everybody's afraid of him. And yet a lot of people love the guy. So I'm asking you, why do you fear or hate Trump? I think it's a valid question for talk radio. Look, I could sit here and read a history book to you, if you'd like, about 1849... Edwin Polk had a fly on his nose, and then Edmund Burke wrote about it 16 minutes later, and then over in England. You don't want to hear me read a history book to you. You want me to read a history book? I'll be glad to. I could read the Bible for an hour. The audience would be the same. I could read the phone book. The audience would be the same. But I find this to be more interesting to me, and I hope to you, and I can live with it at the end of the day. Why do you hate or fear Trump? In the next hour, I'm going to change it to... Are you a sex addict? See, I caught you off guard. Since I did drug addiction two days ago, in the midst of all of this, I'd like to hear from sex addicts and how you cope with it. How do you hide it? Why do you do it? How do you... S I think it's a great topic. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person. Home of borders. Language. Culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And the topic in the first hour has been, why do you f or fear or hate Trump, which will carry over into this hour. But at the end of the last hour, I threw a curveball at you to lighten things up in the, the Yankee Stadium of talk radio. And I asked you if you're a sex addict to call the show because, let's face it, I talked about drug addiction the other day. The show was amazingly interesting. I learned things. It was interesting, certainly more interesting than just politics. And since I happen to know that orgasms are good for you, makes you feel happier, makes you look feel younger. And if you have one, uh, it releases oxytocin, corticosteroids, endorphins. And these natural chemicals elevate your mood, reduce pain, strengthen the immune system. So I'm what, conservatives are not allowed to have an orgasm? Is that it? I, I, you know, I think about it. Maybe purists don't have them. That's why they don't like Trump. It looks like he does. I mean, this is actually humorous when you think about it. There's a certain degree of truth in what I'm positing here. I think the purists are uptight because they don't have what I'm talking about. And they like Cruz because he looks like he doesn't and hasn't for a long time. And they resent Trump because he looks like he does and he has them regularly. <laughs> this is how I see this right now. I mean, there's almost like a psychological, emotional reason for some of these statements people are making. You can all break it down to the uh, pleasure principle. Those who hate him fear that he's going to take away their pleasure. Those who love him think he's going to increase their pleasure. You could look at it that way. I mean, there are different ways to look at anything. Not everything has to be two-dimensional. Like, I don't like him because of politics and this and that. Could be that one, that could be one line of reasoning. Another line of reasoning is, is emotional, along the lines of what I just said. I like this. I like this very much. I know Lenny Bruce would approve of that analysis. May God rest his soul. But I don't know if there's room anymore for humor in this world. I think these, these purists are so humorless, they're like the Grand Inquisitors in the, uh, 
during the, the, the 1500s in Spain. How dare you? You're not a conservative. I'm a conservative. He's a conservative. You're not a conservative. I'm more conservative than you are. Hello, conservative. How will you have a secret handshake? I'm a conservative. You're a conservative. They're a conservative. They're not a conservative. He's not a conservative. Break the whole world down according to your view. Very smart. Very, very giving. Very forgiving. Very big of you. There's whole madness. Well, anyway, these are the topics. Why do you fear or hate Trump and the issue of sex addiction? I think that they're not related, but I think there's a little spill over here. All we know is this. Trump is surging because his visceral populism has defeated the conservative reformists. Write that down if you want to get very specific. Write it down. Go ahead. Take away cocktail. Walk away cocktail. Walk away with that one. He is winning because his visceral populism is defeating the conservative reformists. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I'm just telling you what's happening. My job as a commentator is to comment. If I can, I can shape ideas, but you know, that's not that easy. Borders, language, and culture, 22 years, my mantra. Okay, so it's drifted over. Others use it, make believe it's their own good. I'm the Lao Tzu of radio, I like that. Borders, language, culture, but I... I don't see a one one or two candidates are espousing borders, language, and culture. Trump and Cruz are as close to that as you're ever going to get. Hillary is the anti-border, anti-language, anti-culture candidate. Uh, don't even mention the old man, please, from the pickle factory. Please don't mention the old man from the pickle factory to me. I, please, I, I had too much of Katz's Deli. I ran away from New York 50, 40 years ago to get away from the Bernie Sanders of New York. The Spritzers. The spritz of people. So let's begin with the Trump question, then go into the others. I hope you enjoy the hour. We're just rapping about what's in the news from different perspectives. My job is to keep you educated, entertained, and listening to the radio. And that's what I do best. KKOH in Reno, Nevada. Steve, go ahead, please. You're a hater. You hate Trump. Why? Um, listen, you know, I'm a, I'm a Democrat. I believe in most of what Trump says. And I have a lot of friends, actually that won't admit it, but they like what he says. But I think the thing that turns me off and, and others off as well is just the level of pettiness. I mean, I understand the guy's got to defend himself when he gets attacked, you know, by, by an idiot like Megyn Kelly or, you know, Mitt Romney, but he's got to get in the weeds and he's got to make it personal and he's got to tweet. And when you're in world politics, you, you, you can't operate on that level. So, I mean, if that, I don't know. Maybe we need it. Maybe we need a Khrushchev in the White House to bang a shoe once in a while. You see, here's the thing. I don't know whether I agree or disagree with you on the pettiness issue. I, w I will say this, though. Politicians are sneaks. Obama is very petty, very vindictive, but he never lets you see it. Am I right about that? And, and you're exactly right, and that's why... He and he gets even with everybody who opposes him. He goes after them tooth and claw, but he doesn't show his teeth or his claws. He does it in secret because he's a sneak. At least with Trump, he's up front about it. He's doing what everyone does, but he's letting you see him do it. That's the difference. They're all petty and vindictive. You think that these Sheldon Whitehouses and these other clean Democrats or Republicans are not vindictive and petty behind the scenes? You think Harry Reid is not petty? <clears throat> They're all the same. There's a difference. They're vain and petty. All I'm saying is that Trump's style is a little different than what you've seen because he's a New Yorker, number one, and he's dealt with very rough people in his life. And it's a different world than we're used to seeing in the political world. And frankly, people like it. It's like watching a little, a combination of, uh, the Sopranos, let's say mixed in, uh, with another show, which I can't think of. No, look, I agree with what you're saying, but here's the difference. You, you brought it up several times on your, on your radio station. He doesn't have many conduits. His own party's against him. So I, I guess if there was a time to be sensitive, it would be, not to go on the personal attack. He'll draw more independents and Democrats just with his messaging. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not sure you're right, though. I happen to think independents like honesty, as rough as it may be and as crude as it may be at times, and vindictive, however you put it. I think people like it because at least they know what he's thinking. Over Twitter. They know all the other politicians. They know, they know the whole political class is filled with vindictive people and petty people, but they're hiding it. Now, you yourself are a young young guy, Steve. How old are you? I'm, I'm 40. You sounded like 28. And you're a Democrat at 40? How did that happen? You know, I was originally a Republican, and 
I don't know. I mean, just through the Bush White House, the Iraq War. So, so you like paying high taxes. You want to pay more taxes? No, no. Look, look. I, from a business standpoint, I'm probably more in the Republican camp. I'm well, that's what I, I say to people who say to me, they're business owners in their 40s, and they say they're a Democrat. I said, I guess you want to pay higher taxes. Let's make it fiscal. Why would you want to pay higher taxes? That's what you're going to get from Hillary. So I don't understand that. Uh, and what you, Are you telling me that more Muslims in America would make your life safer or, or, or riskier? Scared of them. It's because he's getting down in the weeds. He knows that all... No, no, no. Answer, answer this question if you don't mind. Would you like to see more Muslims in America from countries that you can't even vet these guys, like from Syria, or fewer Muslims? Fewer. So how could you be a Democrat? One of the first things Hillary would do is open the floodgates completely. Thank you for the call. I don't want to debate the issues. It's just common sense. WABC, Bob, on which topic are you calling the powerhouse, the Savage Nation? What's on your mind today? The sex addiction, Dr. Savage. Uh, you are Bingo. <laughs> All right, so I got, a sec I got a live one. I got a sex addict on the line. What's it about? Uh, basically, you would, you would ask why we do it, or at least why I do it. Basically, it's, you know, for me, it's control. It's the one thing in my life right now that I feel like it controls, since the rest of it seems out of control. <laughs> uh, very, much. very funny. Very funny. And and what? Now tell me you're a conservative Republican on top of it all? <laughs> yeah. No, I like that. I like to hear that there's a conservative Republican who can have a good time. I'm starting to think that conservative Republicans were not allowed to have a good time anymore. I guess sometimes it's too much of a good time, Doctor. Cause, you know, oh, I don't want to hear it. Don't make me jealous. Well, don't, well, well uh, don't be jealous, Doc, because it's not with other people. It's just online you know, pornography and stuff. So it's really not Oh, so you're you're a porno addict. Yeah. And what and what and you feel you're in control watching pornography? That's like the least control in the whole world. Well, basically I could do whatever I want, I could find. You know, if I'm in the mood for something here, I could go this, I could go there, I could, you know, pretty much anything I want to see, I could I could see. It's you know, with so the internet. Wait, wait. So you can sh you can shift your sexuality in pornography. Excuse me, doctor. You can shift your sexual orientation while watching pornography without any ramifications, is what you're saying as well, aren't you? No, no, not not my way. No, I'm 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 just I'm full out straight. It's just basically, you know, if I'm in the mood for, you know, I don't know, this kind of fetish. All right, I I don't need the details. It's going to make the old ladies in Topeka and uh, nervous here. But you are a sex addict, and the reason you are is you like the power and control, even though it's pornography that you are addicted to. Correct. Correct. And if, Wait, are, are you are you in a relationship as well or not? Yes, and that that's that's the part of it that you know pretty much obviously it's difficult and it's it's the lies and deceit and everything that that really tear you apart. And well, you see, I'm going to tell you, I happen to know, having studied this in great detail, that the neurochemistry of pornograph uh, of addiction to pornography steals your ability to have a relationship with a woman. Pretty much. I mean, I, my my relationship was just about done when when that when it got found out and I got into recovery and everything. So, it, yeah, it does uh, it does ruin. Like is recovery? There was a reco How do they get you out of porno addiction? What do they do? It's just like a twelve step group. I mean, it's it, it, obviously it's you know part of it. I guess you could call it willpower and stuff just to take the first step. And once you go through the twelve step program, I mean, obviously it's a continuous battle. You're never fully cured. You know, just like any alcoholic or drug addict. So well, it, because the neurochemical pathways are established, and unless they're fed, you feel like you're starving. And, and it, obviously, yeah, you do go through a withdrawal period. And it's just, you know, it, obviously, you know, it's not like, you know, I guess like drug where you go, you, you know. know I, I don't want to make a joke out of this, but it's a very interesting topic because you, you're obviously not alone. Tens and tens of millions of people are in exactly your, your, your situation. Some people prefer, by the way, what you're doing to actually relating to a human being. Do you know that? Say that I didn't hear you, Doctor. I'm sorry. Some people prefer what you are doing for your self pleasuring to an actual relationship with a human being. I, I could definitely see that, just because again, the human being you have to deal with emotions and feelings and trying to you know, all the fun personal interactions, whereas with with the pornography it's just you know, you're it's just an image to you, you know, and it's just it's All right. Now putting that aside, let's jump to the other question. Who do you support on the Republican side, which candidate? I, I do support Cruz, uh, and just that so so we could say that you could start a group called uh, Porno Addicts for Cruz if you wanted to start a group. 
<laughs> I don't know if I want to be out front. Or at least it, you, at least you got the joke. Thank God you didn't lose your sense of humor. Because I know the purists just dropped their coffee over what I just said. There's no no humor left. It was a joke. It's just a simple joke. I I, I have a humorous gene in me. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening. That's all. Not so be bad. If I lost some ladies in Topeka, I apologize. But there are people who do that stuff, and a lot of them, too. And some of them are not even Democrats or Bernie supporters. I wonder how, what percentage of Bernie supporters are, you know, like a certain... It's an interesting question. Like, why do progressives fear Trump so much? Does he? Do they think he's actually going to stop them from having a good time? I still don't... I haven't heard from one gay person. Why they why they oppose Trump? He's never said a negative thing about gay people. I don't get it. It's like an hysteria, mass hysteria. What is it that you fear about from this guy? I don't get it. I just don't understand it. I, I think we're going to stick to the politics for a minute uh, on why you fear or hate Trump. Then I'm going to go to all the news of the day. That's all. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. I know the history of Ireland, the history of their own people, which is uh, true for many people in America today, uh, European origin in particular. They know nothing about their people. Jews don't even know their own Jewish history. Uh, for example, most Irish, just speaking on history for a minute, don't even know of a major event in Irish history, which was the 1916 Easter Rising, which actually marked the start of the revolutionary violence that culminated six years later in Irish independence. They don't know. History of St. Paddy's Day, they know with the snakes, but they don't know about the founding of the Irish Republic. Or you say Irish history, they say potato famine. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not here to teach you history. It's boring up to a point. It's a social, uh, political social statement that I'm making. Many people say they have pride in America, but they don't know much about America. That's okay. I'm not here to browbeat anybody. Or they say they're uh, French of, in origin. They know very little about France. Or they're British. They know very little about British. And then you get to the Jewish people. What's embarrassing about Jewish people in America, especially the non-religious secular Jews, is that their whole definition of being a Jew is the Holocaust, which is like a branding iron. That should not be the definition, the defining moment in Jewish history. It, it warped Jewish people, the Holocaust. And to make that the entire reason for being Jewish or the, the whole essence of being Jewish is, is crazy. Certainly you shouldn't forget what happened, but it doesn't mean you should define yourself by that event, and that's what secular Jews do. They march around with a chip on their shoulder talking about the Holocaust, and they know very little else about being Jewish. This is a distortion, and the same thing is true, sorry for African Americans who make slavery the whole definition of being an African. That shouldn't be the whole definition of your African heritage. Any more than the Mafia should be a definition of being an, an, uh, an Italian American. Anyone disagree with me? Well, you shouldn't, because I'm making good sense here. You can define yourself any way you wish, but I will tell you this. If you are of Italian heritage and you define yourself by the mafia, then you're limiting yourself in your definition of your personhood. The same is true for all the other peoples I just mentioned. You're limiting yourself. You're locking yourself in to a very uh, proscribed view of yourself and your people. I don't know what that has to do with Trump or, uh, or uh, why you fear or hate Trump, but I, I just thought I'd throw it in. And then I invited sex addicts to call. And then I invited gay people to call and why they fear Trump. I don't understand that part of it. I really don't. I would think that Trump should be the number one candidate for a gay person because he'll crack down on the one foreign element that hates gays overtly. Write it down. They hate dogs and gays. It's in, it's codified. They hate dogs and gays. Why would you want more of that in a country? How stupid can you be? They hate dogs and gays. Who am I talking about? Not the Irish. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. That touring's murder. So I don't do it. I don't want to die in a hotel room. Or worse, on stage. Imagine getting up and doing a performance and dying on stage. I mean, you think about these things. I know no one wants to think about this stuff. But, you know, touring is murder. Some people think they could do everything. Everything they can do. They have no idea. It's like the myth of, you know, 
fly to the moon with the the feathers with the uh wax i forget the uh, mythology of that one i've talked about it many times we have limitations as human beings you see a guy drops dead at 72 so okay there you go recluse stay home do the show no need to go on the road now look what they're doing to trump i cut out personal appearances a long time ago because of the maniacs you know, no, they've inhibited me. In that sense, they've they've won. They kept me at home. I used to do big events. I don't want to be subjected to that garbage. I don't want to have to hire 50 security guards. I don't want to have them take it out on stretchers because they would be. My audience would have beaten them up if I wanted them to the years I did it. I'm telling you, I had the toughest men in the world in my audiences. They would They wanted to get even for what the left was doing to this country. But we controlled them. They controlled themselves. I did events with uh, bodyguards, eight bodyguards on the stage way back in Oakland. I had eight Samoans. They were like 400 pounds each. No one charged the stage then. Somehow at the Oakland airport, Hilton, they took a look at the Samoans. They didn't want to run through the linebackers. I don't want to live that way. So we're living in crazy times. The left is out of control. They think that they can control the country the way they've been doing it through terror tactics. And I hope they're wrong. And that's why I'm for Trump. I'd like to see him control them i'd like to see him get even with these these groups who think that they can dictate the policies of our country uh, through uh through these behaviors no i don't like it i like the ballot box i really do so we're talking about that why you fear why you hate that that to do let's go to wftl in uh, fort lauderdale roger on line eight you've been holding a long time you say that you fear trump and why is that I fear Trump because he has a religious test for governmental action. And that is, of course, as you've been discussing, and we know... Well, wait, 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 what's the religious test? What, what is his religious test? That no Muslims should be able to enter the United States. That's a religious test, and, uh, <clears throat> and he uses that... I, I, don't think, I personally don't think that's a religious test. If you look at what is going on in European nations that have welcomed so many refugees of the Muslim faith, and you see what's being done there. Don't you think there's a rational element to what he's saying? I'm not willing to trade that for a religious test. I'm Jewish. You see, but this is classic liberalism. Here we go again with the Jewish again. Here's a Jew again who's siding with Muslims over his own survival. What sense does that make? Sense is that if they... Sir, I, sir if you're giving me one of these pontifications that I've heard from liberal Jews my whole life. I'd rather see 99 guilty men go free than one innocent man arrested. It's the same mentality. The reality is that if he does it for Muslims, it sets the precedent for him to Again, put for not right, he's gonna ban not why he's gonna ban Jews next. Is that your fear? Next is gonna be a, ga a gas chamber. It may not be him, but the president who was elected after him. You mentioned before in the last hour how you did... Wait, wait, sir, wait, wait, let, let's slow down a bit here. Again, I have to ask you the primary question. Are you at all aware of what is happening in Europe as a result of the uncontrolled immigration of uh, Muslims from the Middle East? Yes, but I don't say that our immigration should be uncontrolled. I think that people should be vetted, studied. Just okay, uh, wait, wait. Well, so let's go to Germany. How come they haven't been able to vet the one million refugees who've come in from Africa and, and Syria? How come they couldn't do it? Into Europe? Yes. I, that's their problem. We have other ways of doing it. We have, we have other ways of doing it? President Obama has eliminated the Border Patrol from doing its job. He's told them to be a welcoming committee instead of a committee that vets anyone. So how in the world could you say that we have other ways of doing it when we're not doing it? You have a man in the Department of Homeland Security who should be in prison in the minds of anyone who studied what he's doing. The man has let one bombing after another occur in this country and does nothing about it and then says there's only so much you can do to stop uh, immigrants from coming in. How can you feel safe saying a thing like that? Because I feel that if there is a religious test, there should be no religious test for government. And you're going back to a theorem. You're going back to a theorem. No, there should be a religious test. If the religion hates you, if it's inherent in the religion to hate everyone else and either forcibly convert them or to kill them, then why shouldn't there be any statements about that? The reason Do you know any other religion on earth that, it, that teaches its young to kill other religions? People of other religions, do you know any other religion that does that? The reason for that is because not every Muslim believes that. Okay. Well, we know that. I, I know how you are speaking very carefully as though I am eight years old. 
I do know that, sir. And it has been written by a Muslim that certainly not all Muslims are terrorists, but it's also certainly true that most terrorists are Muslim. That was written by a Muslim 10 years ago. Okay, I'm not arguing that point. However, let me say this. I'm speaking slowly and clearly because I know I'm on the radio. I'm 70 years of age. I may have some difficulties hearing, and I want to make sure that your listeners can hear me and understand me. All right. we, we can all hear you. We hear you very well. So you're saying that Trump is a racist because he's concerned about Muslims. That's your, your primary fear. And again, knee-jerk liberal Jews will always side with people who would even kill them over somebody who would protect them for fear that they'll be next. That's what you're saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. I did not call Trump a racist. I think that his policy that he is adopting in this case is, well, I don't know if it's racist, but it's certainly anti-religion and using a religion as a basis for governmental discrimination. How do you feel about Obama using religion as a basis for immigration when 99.7% of all Middle Eastern refugees who have been permitted in here are Muslim and about excuse me three percent of them are christian how do you how do you how do you account for that isn't that a religious basis for immigration that obama's using he's not applying that he's not applying that as a basis for admission well, sir excuse me i just gave you a fact of reality that you didn't read in the tampa tribune or the west palm beach gazette of all the refugees coming to this country from the middle east something along the lines of 97 percent are muslim and three percent are christian Obama is using a religious test as to who he permits into this country from the Middle East, sir. That's a fact of reality. It very well may be due to the fact that most people in the Middle East are Muslim. Yes, sir, are you aware there's a genocide being committed against Christians? Yes, and I don't like it, and neither do you. I agree with you. I don't like that genocide. Even John Kerry today, news-wise was forced to admit that there's a genocide being committed against Christians and Yazidis by Muslims. So shouldn't that set off alarm bells and Jews yes. in this country as to who you're going to let into the country? I'm sorry, and it should mean that as far as immigration is concerned, we should not let in members of ISIS or people that sympathize with ISIS. But how do you stop that when you have such intelligent people in the enemy on the enemy side that they're disguising themselves as refugees right now to get into refugee camps in Europe where they are persecuting and and, and beating up and killing Christians? This is another fact that didn't make it to the to the uh, Tampa Tribune. Uh, again, I, I, I'm not the expert on this. I don't know about uh, how, for instance, uh, even Las Vegas casinos, by studying people's eyes, can recognize the people that are out to cheat casinos and have done it in the past. Um, well, how come Obama isn't reading people's eyes and letting everyone in from the Middle East who may, may be coming here to hurt us? I mean, we have had terror incidents under Obama as a result of his lax open-door policies. We do have diseased people pouring in from south of the border. That should alarm you more than a Trump statement about let's figure this thing out with Muslims from the Middle East. And by the way... Can you explain why most of the Muslim refugees coming into Europe are men of military age? Can you explain that? don't know if that's the case, but I will cede... Well, wait, wait, don't run over the fact that I just gave you. I do know that's a fact. But it's something you liberals don't read because guys like Jake Tapper refuse to tell you the reality of it. The majority of Muslims pouring into Europe are men of military age. That's what Trump was saying. Young men of military age. And by the way, ISIS itself has said that this is their plan. It's an invasion. Their, their long-term goal is to actually take over Europe through immigration. You should be applauding as a Jewish person. You of all people should be applauding Trump, not standing on a principle that doesn't apply and calling him a racist for fear that you'll be next. As I said, I didn't call him a racist. I said the policy adopts a religious standard to take governmental action. It's like interning the Japanese during World War II. And what about Obama favoring Muslim immigrants from the Middle East? That is not a religious test? I don't know how, you know, again, I can only... Well, I do know. I do know. I'm an expert on the subject. I study this day in and day out. I can give you chapter and verse on it. 97% of all immigrants coming out of the Middle East permitted into America are of the Muslim faith, 3% are Christian. Why? Because Barack Obama wants Muslims here. And it, or it may be because, I don't know 
the number of applicants and their religion. Oh, you don't know? I'll give you another fact. I can tell you one after the other who've been turned down. I can tell you about Coptic Christians sitting in San Diego for three years who had relatives there who were sent out of this country because this racist administration, which hates Christians, sent them out of the country. They'd rather have Muslims than Christians, sir. This is a fact of reality. People who study these things have reported it over and over again. But the quizzlings in the media, like your Wolf Blitzers and your Jake Tappers, kindly ignore all of these facts so intelligent men like yourself cannot make a, a judgment that has any rationality to it well uh, again thank you for the call i think we've done that very well and i can give you the facts on this i often do in fact if you were to do a quick google on it i hate to even say google i don't like those people politic politically i think they're very dangerous totalitarians the whole group that runs google but if you do do excuse me a google search on percentage of Muslims, percentage of Christians coming into America from the Middle East, I think you'll find the answer pretty quickly. If you do another search, another Google search on Christians denied asylum under Obama, you'll find another series of articles. It's out there, right, Robert? We've seen it over and over again. But unfortunately, because of quizzlings of very thin intellect, like Jake Tapper and Wolf Blitzer, nobody knows this except those who study it. I think that was a very good topic. One more call on a different topic completely. Brian on WABC. Brian, hi. What's your topic, please? Dr. Savage, good afternoon. I'm a, uh, an openly gay man, and I support Donald Trump. I okay, good. But, w but why do you support Trump? For what reason? I've completely had it with the way the politicians have turned Washington into a good old boys club. We need an outsider in there. This is why they're afraid of him, because he's an outsider. He's going to come in and rock their boat and spoil their game. And I have all the confidence in the world that he's going to get in there, appoint uh, competent people to his cabinet positions, run the country like a business. He's not going to chase me back in the closet. I've got nothing to fear. And and we just need to shake up Washington. And he's the but, but Okay, everything you say, from my point of view, is correct, Brian. But in your community, if you want to call it that, I, I don't think such a thing as a monolithic community. Most gays fear Trump, don't they? Irrationally? Uh, irrationally, yes. Sadly, it's because they, they take on the whole Republican persona that they're anti-gay. And we're talking about politics here, about our country, about the budget, about how we stand in the world position. We have to put the gay issues on the back seat in that regard and look what we need to fix that's out in the window that people see. <laughs> you know, it's funny you're saying this because I sent, I sent that to a gay group that sent me something about where does Trump stand on, on LGBT issues. I said, can you get your head onto fiscal issues for two minutes and stop talking about yourself? sexuality there's a bigger issue than your sexuality here as you said before the they're gonna they're gonna take their sexuality and use that as their label for a gay person and and not worry about anything else about their politics about where the country's going etc you know it's ridiculous we we have to take a stand and well i think you're a very small minority in the lgbt community don't you well, I probably am, but uh, myself and my partner have been together for 30 years, and the friends that we have, we're going to go to the ballot box, and we're going to do... Oh, uh, so you're, you're, you're what's known as old God conservative gays, because you're actually with someone for 30 years. Yeah, 30 years, and that's what people don't see either. They, they focus on the gay people as the ones roller skating down Fifth Avenue at the Gay Pride Parade. 30 years we've been together, our, ma our mothers are buried side by side, and, you know, we got to get the country fixed. Unbelievable. Well... See, I, I wanted to take this topic on today, and I was hoping I'd get a great caller like you, Brian, to help, you know, elucidate what you, you see as the reality here of Trump. I have never heard a single homophobic syllable come out of the man's mouth. What's the fear? It's all irrational. Thank you very much for calling. It's 48 minutes after the hour, almost 49 minutes after the hour. I'll be back in a minute on the juggernaut Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. Now kill the music. This is the Savage Nation. We have only a minute or so left in this hour, and there's too much to talk about. We're talking about the hate fest against Donald Trump. And look at the list and litany of people who hate him. Harry Reid gave a big speech today 
attacking Donald Trump because he's panicking. But the list of groups who hate Donald Trump include Black Lives Matter, Move On, the Sierra Club, NARAL, that's the marijuana peddlers, Pro-Choice America, the abortion racketeers, Greenpeace, the environmental racketeers, are all involved in an anti-Trump campaign. So these haters on the left are calling him a hate-peddling bigot, when they are, in fact, hate-peddling bigots who've gotten away with murder for so many years that they become the new normal. So in other words, the left wing peddles hate for so many years that they start to think that what they're saying is not hateful anymore. But if you read what Move On does, what Greenpeace does, the Sierra Club, the marijuana peddlers, the so-called pro-choice America, or, or Black Lives Matter, they're peddling hatred and bigotry. Of course they're threatened by Donald Trump. Of course they're going to attack him. And that's why we've talked about why do you fear or hate Trump. Many of you stay with the show for another big hour. We're also talking about sex addiction and how you hide it. That's right. All this and more with the latest news and Harry Reid, you name it. Visceral populism trumps conservative reformists on the savage nation. If you're not a good provocateur, don't be in radio. If you want to be a professor, I suggest you uh, look for a job as a professor. But if you want to hold me up to the standards of a professor, you're making a big mistake. Because I don't pretend to be one. I'm a talk show host. My job is to provoke you into listening and calling the show. That's the whole job I have. It's as simple as that. Make no mistake about it. KSFO, Eric, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. What's your topic? Yeah, I'm a gay person, and I don't like Trump because I don't know what he believes. He could easily wake up one day, say gay people are all pedophiles, get him out of the country. Well, don't you think there's a degree of irrationality in your suspicion? No, I mean, he changes his, he seems to be unprincipled. Every second, it's, you know, he says something different. Well, in the last hour, we had a gay man who thought the opposite of you. He said he's never heard an anti-gay sentiment from Trump. I don't know where you're getting it from. I just don't. Well, I mean, I haven't, I haven't heard him say anything pro either. Why, why, that's the biggest issue in the world right now, is whether he's pro or con gays? No, you just have to, I mean, that would be a general fear of him, that I, you don't know what he, he's capable of. I mean, you don't know he has... Uh, okay, let, let's look at it another way. As a gay man, do you fear Muslims? Well, I, I could say I fear Christians. I mean, there's certainly enough Christians in America who want to exterminate gay people. Really? Where? Where are there Christians who want to exterminate gay people? I haven't I haven't read about it or seen it anywhere. Where's that coming from? Well, just Google it. They're, they're even supported by presidential candidates. Ted Cruz, Bobby Jindal, uh, Mike Huckabee, they spoke at a conference where uh, a gay... Boy, boy, this paranoia rages. Rages? Rages? You're living in a, in a world of totally irrational fear. This is an invention. And you you don't know anything about the, the, the fanatics in the Muslim religion who kill gays routinely? Not just say it, but do it in the Middle East? You, you That didn't seep through your Internet searches? But what does that have to do with... <laughs> you're, you're off topic. I mean... You, you no, I'm not, I'm not off I'm right on topic. Trump says he wants to uh, stop the influx of Muslims to America until we can figure this thing out. That's not an irrational statement when you consider that there's a genocide being committed in the Middle East against Christians and Yazidis, and for that matter against gays in the Middle East by Muslims. That's a very rational statement. In America, in America, as a gay person, I work for a company that could, you know, fire me for being gay. Where has he come out in support of that? I don't know that he support. you know... He it seems to me that your entire orientation toward the world is about your sexuality. You actually see nothing beyond... 
your sexual orientation. Well, what if I lost my job? That, that goes beyond my... No, but what, can't you see beyond your sexual orientation? Or is that your entire frame of reference? Oh, so you think it's okay that I, that I could be uh, fired? Well, don't, play, don't play victim with me. Now you'll say, I'm saying you should be fired. That's the next thing. You'll go on the internet. Savage said you should be fired because you're gay. I didn't say that. But you're trying to engage me and, and entrap me. I'm saying to you that you seem to be obsessed only with your sexual orientation. Can't you detach from it and look at the bigger world? Do you think I should be okay to live in a Again, where I can you're limited, sir. You are imprisoned by your sexual orientation because you can't think beyond it. Well, why, should I, why should I be afraid to go work at a company and be fired? That's but that's all you're talking about. Aren't there any other issues on your... On your mind, other than your 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 uh, or your sexual orientation, how am how am I going to even live if I don't have a job? See again, you go back to that over and over again. Are you seriously telling me that in the San Francisco area you will be fired for being gay? Tell me which company would do that. I work for a company that is in San Francisco. I work for a company in a different state. I live in San Francisco, but I work for a company in another state where they could fire me for being gay. So why do you work for them? Okay. Wait, wait, sir, why do you work for them, then? Well, why does a baker refuse to bake cakes? You know, that's just like saying, well, why not go find another job? Why? Because that's their religious belief. You, you think you should be able to coerce people to doing what they don't want to do from a religious point of view? Isn't that rather fascistic of you? No. Well, you're, you're against Muslims because they want to kill Americans or Christians. Christianity wants to kill gay people. You can make this... Oh, boy, you really are living in a terrible, terribly, terribly distorted world. Would you tell me which Christians want to kill gay people? Are you still there? Which Christians want to kill gay people? Not easy. See, this is crazy. This is a man who is an overt, paranoid lunatic. And, you know, I want to repeat something else. I personally am a sexual libertarian. I've said it for years. I don't care what a person does in the privacy of their own home. It's really not, not a matter of whether I care or not, because I have no power over anyone. But I truly don't care what you do to pleasure yourself. But I would like to understand how people cannot transcend their sexual orientation and not see the world beyond their, their, their pleasure principle. There's a broader world than how you pleasure yourself. Can't you detach your sexuality from your reality? I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2646. Amazing what happens to a tolerant city over time becomes intolerant. I got here in 74. It was a big gay community. The people were different. It was not a militancy that you see today. It was a great city. We had a good B newspaper, but it was a newspaper. We have nothing here now politically and nothing here socially that's really of any note. All right, so we have Silicon Valley. Great. And that's really good for the economy. That Tell me how that's working out for the people who are being driven out of their houses. They're buying houses all over the Bay Area on speculative uh, as speculators and sitting on them, not even renting them out. And people who are starting out can't even buy a house for four hundred thousand dollars. That's what's going on in the Bay Area. It's driving everyone out of the area. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to stick to what we were talking about before, which is why do you hate Trump? Do you fear hate Trump? Are you a sex addict? How do you hide it? I think these are great topics. I feel invigorated because Trump's visceral populism has defeated the conservative reformists and destroyed Rubio. He just announced today that not only is he, we know he's finished politically because of his stupid stance that he took on the stage with the small hands. You know, big men with small hands, what they say about them, that was really politically great. That really worked. So Marco now to now announced he will not seek even a senatorial re-election. He's finished as a senator in his home state. I don't know what this guy could become. As I said, I hear that Castro is calling. He wants him to have an ice cream truck in Havana now that relations are smoothing out. He could ride around ringing the bell. Rubio's ice cream, not a bad idea. It's a way to start all over again. 
look at the combination. Xenophobia, racism, uh, encouraging violence among his supporters, militarism. Uh, he didn't get a lot of attention the other day right. when he said, we, let's go into the Middle East, clean out ISIS, yeah. and we'll be back really quickly. You know, that was his framing. We've heard that from uh, militarist leaders for generations. The boys will be home by Christmas. Right. This so, is, this uh, is Sandini Shut up. This is Sandinista Bill de Blasio, the communist mayor of New York City, one of the most unhinged progressives in the history of American politics, who obviously hates Trump out of fear, fear that he actually might destroy ISIS and might secure our borders, might make our language sound again and just might support our culture. That's why Democrats are sounding an alarm against Donald Trump. And when you combine them with the other groups that are doing it, such as the marijuana groups, move on, supported by George Soros. I can list all of the groups. These are the people who've gotten away with virtual murder in this country and think now that that's the norm, that their, their form of fratricide, homicide, infanticide is the norm in America, but it is not. And most people want it stopped, by the way. That's why they hate Trump. Now, I'm not sitting here to support him, 100% support him, because I know that I'm going to be disappointed at the end of the day if he wins. In that, A, he's human, and B, he's running for office. What more do you need to know? And C, there's going to be a Congress he has to deal with if he does win. And moving Congress is quite another story. We do live in a sort of punitive democracy. The only reason uh, that Obama's gotten away with a semi-dictatorial regime is because the Congress has become supine out of fear of being called racist. Or worse yet, they've been threatened behind the scenes or blackmailed, in my estimation. Okay, let's go to some callers. They're so good that I, I know you want to hear them. KSFO, San Francisco, Tony, line one. What's on your mind, Tony? I love my wife, dog, but she isn't very warm to the physical touch, if you know what I mean. I mean, uh, uh, I use the Internet pornography sites, but that's, uh, you know, it's all that is. It's like, uh, you know, it's it's not. At the end of the day, I require, you know, the real thing, physical touch, uh Affairs are the best. They actually have the emotion that I'm looking for. But, you know, uh, the best uh, thing I do nowadays, I mean, I try not to anymore, but the, uh, you know, the uh, old woman of the night, uh, you know, go on the Internet and find uh, one uh, for a living. And, so, uh, wait, wait, wait. Come on. You're a sex addict and you're calling. Aren't you afraid your wife's listening? Uh, we don't get your station here in Pittsburgh, but uh, I'm listening on the Internet. Uh, KSF. Oh, oh what, what, you're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Yes, sir. Oh, you're listening on KSFO Online. Most people listen to me online listen on KSFO Online. That's amazing. I'm on WJR in Detroit, but not in Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh, by the way. I lived there once. I love the bridges. I love the whole scene in Pittsburgh. No one knows what a beautiful city it is. So you actually are not afraid to go out there and 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 uh, engage with prostitutes with all the disease around. You're not afraid of that? Oh uh, yeah. Well, nowadays, uh, yeah, I, I haven't been uh, been out to doing that since uh, the old Zika came out. I got to tell you, you know, or Zika or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'll be honest. The old, the old Zika, the old Zika, the old. It's the, the new Zika, which really is the old Zika. Been around quite a while in Africa. Uh, all right, so you, I'm not, I'm not here to judge. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a priest. I asked for sex addicts to call and ask how you deal with. Obviously, you're guilty, right? You feel guilty about it. Absolutely. I haven't, I haven't seen, uh, seen somebody else in a long time. But uh, you see, uh, now this is a very intriguing call. Why would a man who doesn't know me call a radio show, you know, and make an admission that he's a sex addict? with uh, internet pornography and affairs and all that why would he do it because he wants to unburden himself and and many people do and it's probably a safer place to do it than almost anywhere some people will call a radio show and thank you my friend for being brave enough to call and they'll call anonymously and say things they wouldn't say to a therapist would you believe it because it's impersonal that's why it's impersonal and that, that's the be beautiful part about talk radio we still have an impersonality an anonym anonymity, rather, that doesn't exist much in the world anymore. In this world where everything you say, everything you utter is recorded or could be, people are afraid to say a word. And somehow there are people who will call a radio show and say things like he just said. Isn't that amazing? And I think that's one of the most viable rationales for, for talk radio is what, what just happened. Who's the next great caller here? KVOR. Arnold, line seven. What's your topic, Arnold? Good afternoon, Dr. Savage. Long-time listener, first-time caller. You're one of my personal heroes. 
I'm a uh, retired Navy pilot and officer. I'm a conservative. I'm also a Christian. I happen to be gay. Um, speaking of, uh, just listening to your previous callers that happen to be gay, the first one I agree with a whole lot. Uh, my partner and I just, we just exist. We blend in because it's not an issue. We see past our identity, and our identity is greater than our sexuality. And I think that's, well, that's what I was trying to, but that's a mature viewpoint. In other words, you can have a sexual orientation, but that can't be the be all and end all of your life. No, I, I, exactly. And it took a lot of time and uh, a lot of growth and therapy on my heart, on my part, to realize that and to understand that. Um, I think that the biggest thing was, was that I'm a Christian. It took a long time to, you know, to resolve and justify my sexuality with my Christianity and also with the Navy. Arnold, I want to go. I want to go back with you to the early days of your career in the Navy. Were you identifying sexually then as you are now? Uh, yes, sir. So this has been since what adolescence? You knew you were gay. I knew I was gay. I, I don't think I ever knew I was straight. Um, I did everything. I, I spent a lot of time in uh, ex-gay ministries and a lot of time, you know, in church trying to get the demon thrown out of me and be healed. And <laughs> finally, <took laughs> forget forget the demon. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> you better leave the demon alone. You better leave him alone because you rip him out of your body. You know what's going to happen? There's going to be nothing left. Exactly. Yeah, you can pretend. It's <laughs> now let's hear it for the demon. Yay, demon. You know what I learned a long time ago? I learned a long time ago from a, from a, I would say, a mystical religious person from the old world that the evil impulse in a human being is so powerful that if it's marshaled correctly, that evil impulse, that so-called evil impulse, if you want to call it that, if it's marshaled correctly, can be used for great good. And I would venture a guess that you had to wrestle with these ideas while you were flying off carrier decks. Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the things that would pop into my head. <laughs> one of the things that would, that would pop. How could you still have that on your mind when you have so many other things to do to avoid getting, you know, winding up in the sea? How could you do that? Don't all of these personal things go away when you're under such pr uh, stress? You You learn... From men that are much greater than yourself, and, and also women that are much greater than you. In my case, it was uh, some drill instructors at Aviation Officer Candidate School that taught me how to compartmentalize and how to dig deep and to become more than I ever dreamed or thought I could be. And uh, you know, I, lo I love what you just said, compartmentalize, where you can put things out of your mind, what, and, and fix your mind on on your mission. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I do it now in the cockpit every day. Are, are you still a Navy pilot? Uh, negative. I uh, retired out of the Navy. I'm now an airline pilot for a major carrier. Amazing. Now, this is a great conversation because naval aviators are my heroes. They always have been. I guess I would say I'm a frustrated naval aviator. Ever since I've been a kid, I always used to have those little Corsairs in my hand, and I used to dream one day of doing it, but I found that I couldn't fly a plane. I have a terrible ability with spatiality, and I couldn't do it. I mean, there's certain things I wanted to do that I couldn't do. It's like I have no facility with languages. I'd love to be able to speak eight languages, but I'm very happy to speak English well. So I've limited my, my, my scope in what I could be and what I cannot do. And I think that's one of the things about becoming mature is recognize, recognize, recognizing your limitations, don't you? I agree 100%. I think that with regard to the second caller, that he, a lot of gay people live in San Francisco. They surround themselves with gay people, and that becomes their major focus. It's just more of a, uh, it just becomes inbred in you. And I, I speak from experience. I moved to San Francisco after I got out of the Navy, and I, I had to leave after a year and a half because they, they preach tolerance, love, and diversity. But they don't tolerate nor love anything that is diverse from itself, and they. <laughs> You're right. You're right about that. I'm having I'm having a lot of difficulty staying here, even though I've been here for so many years. I have property here. I have some friends here, and uh, you know I'm used to being here. It is the most intolerant place I've ever lived in in my life. I I've lived uh, I've moved 35 times, and I would have to agree 100 percent with you, sir. Beautiful. Well, look, but, uh, the it's gorgeous, and I'm, I really don't want anyone driving me out of here because of their intolerance. Arnold, I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. Thank you for your service to America. No, no, nothing else I could say. I want to stay focused for a moment on what we're doing today. We're doing a lot of interesting things. It's risk-taking. I'm walking on three tight ropes at once.
between eight skyscrapers. Bill on WABC, thanks for calling. Bill, what's on your mind? Uh, Michael, I just want to thank you for fantastic radio. There's no other host that can go from politics to famous fathers and their troubled sons or their tortured sons and then talk about food. And I just want to thank you for great radio. Even though we're in really important times right now, um, you, 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 you just cover everything. And I just want to thank you. I've been listening to you for many, many years. I couldn't do, do so for a while because I was working, and now I can't not listen to you. So I just want to thank you. I even do it on the Internet because uh, ABC only covers you for two hours. But but, I know, I know, I know. But I know that. I want to really and, then, and then the ratings drop off in the third hour when I'm not on. Go figure. All right, Bill, thank you for the kind words. But the fact is, versatility, versatility, versatility in ideas and in discussion is what I seek because I am. The fact of the matter is, I'm not doing this for effect. I, if I got stuck on one topic, I would lose interest. The audience would lose interest. But I think that by mixing things around... You could say there's a relationship in a strange way, because I started the show by saying, why do you fear or hate Trump? And then I move into you, uh, a subject of, are you a sex addict? You say, well, what's the connection? You know, it's funny. There is a connection. I believe that if I, were to, if I had the time to develop it, I'm very intuitive. If I were forced to sit down and say, is there a connection between the two, two, topics, two topics, I would say yes. I think that Trump represents a certain raw masculinity that is both attractive and offensive to the American electorate. And I believe that this is an interesting topic for that reason alone. He represents this raw, masculine, alpha male, BS artist, whatever you want to call it. Take no prisoners, you know, you can do what you want. He speaks like a New Yorker who's dealt with a very rough customers his whole life. He knows their language, he knows how they think. And that's why most people who love him love him, because they know that he's going to talk that way to China, to Russia, to uh, Japan, to Mexico, and tell them to, you know what, uh, if they don't like it, they can go back where they came from. That's what is exactly, that's the zeitgeist of Donald Trump. So what does it have to do with I don't the, the specific topic of your sexual thing? I don't know if it's exactly that, but I know that there's an element of the the masculine feminine the machismo, if you want to put it to you that way, put it that way. I would say it's more machismo than sexuality that we're talking about, but I don't know how you can disconnect machismo from that issue of sexuality. I don't know that they, they're two different things. So this is good stuff for me, and I'll be happy with myself tonight as I lay my head down on the pillow and say, you know, I, I, the show reruns itself in my head at night often, like not the whole three hours, but pieces of it come back. Almost, almost verbatim. I can hear it back in my mind. And something like, ah, I shouldn't have said it. And then, today's good, sh a good show. There's nothing I said thus far that I wish I hadn't said. And that's about the most the talk show host could ever say to himself at night. Because, you know, like a writer will sit down. Well, sure, you can eliminate what you just wrote by, by, by delete. <laughs> you know, control, dump it. Just dump it right out of your manuscript. But you can't do it on talk radio. We are on the wire. We're speaking out from the heart and the mind. We make a mistake, we have to live with it. That's the game we play, and no one forces us to do it. And I think I've done a good job, and I'll be back to do more of it right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Oh, you can it's like the last gulp of a good drink. Enthusiasm for Hillary continues to slide. Trump had more votes in Ohio and Missouri, and that is why Harry Reid's freaking out. He gave a speech saying, I cannot fathom how Donald Trump rose so far and so fast. And they are really, they're really uh, gathering, it's a gathering storm of leftist fanatics to head off Trump. So that's why I asked you, what do you fear about this guy? I don't understand it. I'm very sensitive to dangerous people and to dangers in general. I have a super alarm bell in me. I think he's, in many ways, more of a savior than he is a uh, fear monger. He would do the things that I think America needs to give us a modicum of nationalism back, which we don't have. And I believe that's anathema to the communists like Bill de Blasio. These progressives are all anti-nationalists. Do you understand this? For whatever the reasons are, they're anti-nationalists. Trump is a putative... A, mo a moderate nationalist, I put it, put it that way. I define him as a Christian nationalist, incidentally, because when the Christian thing came up, he said that he is a, a good Christian. He didn't hide from it. 
And he also said he's a proud Christian, didn't hide from it either. But he, so I would say, therefore, he's a Christian nationalist, if you want to put it to you that, put it that way. I know those are terrifying words to leftists, just terrifying. If you said ISIS, kidnapping, murder, rape, they wouldn't scare them as much as you're saying uh, Christian nationalist to them. They're mad, mad men. Now, I understand the psychology of this anti-Christian fervor amongst progressives. Some of it is, all of it's irrational with Christians today. However, it goes back to a an ancestral memory of the Inquisition, I think, in many cases. I haven't really written on this, but I do believe that people do functional on, on ancestral memories some of us do, and some of us don't. We don't even know what, what's motivating us. But I think that people who really fear Christians, fear Christians, well, of course, in their own life, if they had an authoritarian father who was a fundamentalist Christian or something, okay, but that's, that's one thing. But those who have not had that background, or may not even be Christian, who have this great fear of Christianity, and have no such fear of Islam, are totally irrational in the world of today. And they're functioning on a ancestral memory rather than on a functional reality of today. And that's all I could say on the subject at this time, because we're almost flat out of time. And again, I invite you to visit michaelsavage.com. You can get a free newsletter a couple of times a week. You click on something there if you want to read a sample of my Diseases Without Borders. It's about the Zika virus and what you could do to stimulate your immune system. Number one among health books. I hardly promote it. I hardly talk about it. But it's a book for its time. That's it. It's been a great day. Enjoy St. Patty's Day. Remember the suffering of the Irish people when you do. Never forget the black and tans.